Hello, my name is Katie and welcome to my video. I am so excited to be here filming this because this is my TBR for Nonfiction November. This is my third year participating in Nonfiction November. If you don't know what that is, Nonfiction November is hosted every year by Olive from the channel A Book Olive, as well as a whole host of other people, some of them newer than others. They have um, an Instagram account, a Goodreads page, a Twitter page. I think they even have a TikTok this year. So I will put all the details in the description box below. For the first time this year, they're doing a group read, and that is The Yellow House by Sarah M. Broom. I do intend to read this book with the group. Memoirs are not usually my thing, but I really want to participate in the group read this year and, and support that idea because I think it's a good one. As is the case every year, Olive has put together four one-word prompts to kind of help guide your book selection if you so choose. Um, to participate, really all you have to do is read one nonfiction book. The idea is just to read a little bit more nonfiction than you normally would. The four one-word prompts can be interpreted however you want. They are just there to kind of help you choose. This year, those prompts are time, movement, buzz, and discovery. So what I've done is I've pulled a selection of books off my shelf for each category, and I've put them all into a randomized spinning wheel, and we're gonna select that way. Before we get to the selection, I thought it would be a good idea to let you know what the options are. For the prompt time, I have Reality is Not What It Seems, The Journey to Quantum Gravity by Carlo Rovelli. Carlo Rovelli is an Italian physicist. I have read a couple of his books, and I usually enjoy them. Anytime you're discussing reality or gravity, time is going to be a component of that. So I thought I could stretch the prompt to fit this selection. Next option is The Fabric of the Cosmos, Space, Time, and the Texture of Reality by Brian Greene. I got this one fairly recently, and I'm pretty intrigued to get to it. The next selection would be actually a really easy one because it's kind of short and that is 30 Second Brain, the 50 most mind-blowing ideas in neuroscience, each explained in half a minute. 30 seconds is an amount of time, so I selected this. Also, it's not that long, so I think it'd be a really good one to throw in there. The last four are all by the same author, <laughs> and they're all dealing with, uh, like, space and time. He is also I'm not sure actually if he's a physicist or a mathematician, but the two kind of go hand in hand, so. I have Parallel Worlds, A Journey Through Creation, Higher Dimension, and the Future of the Cosmos. Hyperspace, A Scientific Odyssey Through Parallel Universes, Time Warps, and the Tenth Dimension. The Future of Humanity, Terraforming Mars, Interstellar Travel, Immortality, and Our Destiny Beyond Earth and Physics of the Future, How Science Will Shape Human Destiny in Our Daily Lives by the Year 2100, all by Michio Kaku. I feel like any of these selections could work for the prompt of time, so I just threw them all in the spinning wheel. Now, my plan here is to screen record me spinning the wheel and insert the video into the video, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle that while editing, so fingers crossed. If you are in fact seeing that, then I did it. Cool! So we're selecting the book for time. Okay! For time, we got Physics of the Future, How Science Will Shape Human Destiny in Our Daily Lives by 2100. I'm excited about this. I love speculation about what life is going to look like in the future. I like it in like my science fiction, but I also like it in nonfiction as well. So I'm pretty excited to get to this one. The next prompt is movement. I have a little bit less for this 
section for this prompt because there were several books that I feel like I could have pulled from the other two categories and put into here but I really just thought they fit better where they were so I only have five books for this one the first is On Grand Strategy by John Lewis Gaddis I picked this one for movement because I think your movements should be strategic. Yeah, it's a bit of a stretch, but again, this one isn't that long. So I thought maybe if I get something like this, I'll be able to read a few more books in November. The next one I selected was The New Silk Roads, The Present and Future of the World by Peter Frankopan. I read his book, the, the Silk Road, which is the actual Silk Road between Europe and Asia. And it was really good. I liked it. This one is a little bit, sh well, it's a lot shorter than that one. And I chose this one for movement because uh, roads are how you move. They facilitate movement. Yeah, I'm, I'm really trying here. <laughs> so yes, I wouldn't be mad if this one gets chosen either. The next one I've chosen is another one that's kind of a stretch, and it's The Space Barons, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and the Quest to Colonize the Cosmos by Christian Davenport. They are making movements towards getting to space. <laughs> this is really pathetic. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. This one, this one fits a little better, and that is The Book That Changed America, How Darwin's Theory of Evolution Ignited a Nation by Randall Fuller. This is the movement of the theory of evolution from Europe to America. And I think that one works the best so far. The last one I have is The Spinning Magnet, the electromagnetic force that created the modern world and could destroy it by Alana Mitchell. Spinning is a type of movement. I'm not even sure that's like the movement that they were going for. I feel like they were going movement in the sense of like the Black Lives Matter movement or like various LGBTQ plus movements. But I've taken it in a totally different direction. Okay, let's spin our movement wheel. We got On Grand Strategy by John Lewis Gaddis. I am not even mad. Um, this one is a little bit shorter, and I think it'll be really interesting. Our next category is Buzz. And this is the category that I think I could have moved a couple of these from buzz into movement. And I probably should have done that, but whatever, we're here now. Okay, lots of options here. The first option is The Bell Curve, Intelligence and Class Structure in American Life by Richard J. Herrnstein and Charles Murray. This got buzz in a bad way, starting in the 1990s when it was published, and it continues today. I have The Last Castle, The Epic Story of Love, Loss, and American Royalty in the Nation's Largest Home by Denise Kiernan. I feel like I heard this mentioned on TV at some point. And I think that's why I thought this could be slotted into buzz. Because I feel like if somebody's talking about it on TV, probably got some buzz. This one, this one's a bit of a stretch. Backstage at the Lincoln Assassination, The Untold Story of the Actors and Stagehands at Ford's Theater by Thomas A. Bogar. There was definitely a lot of buzz when Lincoln got assassinated. Ooh, this one actually is buzzworthy. Stiff, The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers by Mary Roach. Mary Roach is incredibly buzzed about on YouTube. And this book in particular, I've heard lots of people talk about. So, so this one fits better than most. Next, I have In the Garden of the Beasts, Love, Terror, and an American Family in Hitler's Berlin by Eric Larson. Eric Larson, in general, is a buzzed about nonfiction author, so I thought I'd throw this one on there. This one I've heard a lot of buzz about, but this one definitely could have fit into movement instead, and I probably should have done that, but... And that is The Warmth of Other Suns, The Epic Story of America's Great Migration by Isabel Wilkerson. Isabel Wilkerson has been talked about a lot recently, um, more for her book Cast than this one, but no matter. I think she's becoming um, more of a, a well-known name, at least on YouTube. Oof, this next one's kind of a stretch. Alexander Hamilton, Revolutionary by Martha Brockenborough. Because of the musical Hamilton, I feel like this fits into the category for buzz because people talk about this man a lot. My last selection for this category, 
actually has been talked about a lot, and that is We Were Eight Years in Power, An American Tragedy by ta Coates. This book I've been wanting to get to for a while, and I would definitely not be mad if it were selected. So let's pull up the spinning wheel, shall we? Oof, we got The Warmth of Other Suns. This is huge, but that's okay. I'll just uh, be reading it all month. And that's fine. This might be the only one I actually get to. The last prompt is discovery. And I have a very large stack for that as well. All of these books, I feel like, embody discovery in some way, shape, or form. Although, to be fair, any nonfiction book could really be slotted into discovery because you're discovering something new. My first selection is Turn Right at Machu Picchu, Rediscovering the Lost City One Step at a Time by Mark Adams. Not that long, so I'd be okay with this being selected. Next is Worlds to Explore, Classic Tales of Travel and Adventure from National Geographic. I think this one would be great because it's like various short stories and I find those to be really easy to read, especially if you're trying to read, like to do a readathon. My next selection, The Origins of Creativity by Edward O. Wilson. This is one of those that I feel is just a nonfiction book that you can slot in because you're discovering the origins of creativity. But like you could definitely just put discovering whatever <laughs> in the front of any nonfiction title and I'm pretty sure you could make it work. This is another one of those where I could stick discovering at the front of it and make it work. But that's How Not to Be Wrong, The Power of Mathematical Thinking by Jordan Ellenberg obviously discovering how not to be wrong. My next selection, The Secret History of the World by Mark Booth. I actually really want to read this because I would like to discover more about secret societies. Two left. We're almost there. Decoding Andean Mythology by Margarita B. Marindale. This just sounds interesting. I haven't heard anything about Andean mythology. And so I think this would be a really good read. Finally, The Buried, an archaeology of the Egyptian Revolution by Peter Hessler. I think this kind of embodies discovery perfectly. To me, um, archaeology is one of those fields where I feel like you are just constantly discovering. We're spinning the discovery wheel. We got Decoding Andean Mythology. This is another one that's a bit chunky. Are there pictures? I hope there are pictures. Oh, there are. Okay, that makes it a little less chunky. <laughs> but I'm really excited about this. So let's recap. My TBR. My TBR for Nonfiction November will be The Group Book, The Yellow House by Sarah M. Broom. For the prompt of time, I'll be reading Physics of the Future by Michio Kaku. For the prompt of movement, I will be reading On Grand Strategy by John Lewis Gaddis. For the prompt of buzz, I have The Warmth of Other Suns by Isabel Wilkerson. And for the prompt of discovery, I have Decoding Andean Mythology by Margarita B. Marindale. I don't think it's likely that I'm going to get through all these in a month. It's possible, but not probable. But wish me luck. If you are planning on doing nonfiction November, please let me know. I'd love to go watch your TBR whenever you post it. Also in the comments, let me know how you feel about any of these books I've selected. Are there any that you've already read? Are there any that you're particularly excited to hear my thoughts about? Let's chat. If you like my content, subscribe. Stick around. I'd love to see you in my comments. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon.